We're here at the ICSIUGA meeting with Amy Reba Hoffman, who is a nurse practitioner working in Dr. Christine Whitmore's office in the Pelvic and Sexual Health Institute in Philadelphia. Uh, ICA members know Amy because she contributed to our award-winning issue from last year, the self-help issue, and she gave us advice on how to do uh, self-installations. Now she's a co-author on this study that was accepted as a poster here at the ICS IUGA meeting studying complementary and alternative therapies for IC patients. And I wanted to ask Amy, Amy, um, how does this study make a difference to you in your practice? So I've noticed in the last couple weeks in working on this poster that I've actually started to reference some of this information already in talking to patients. Um, it's very often that I have uh, patients ask questions either about specific complementary and alternative therapies or just in general what their alternatives are uh, to medications, procedures, and so on. And most of the time all I've been able to do is, you know, cite the uh, research that's been done maybe on just specific therapies or have just been able to draw on my own clinical experience over the years. I usually just think back through patients I've seen and try to remember the best that I could how these therapies have affected patients. And really haven't had anything like this where there's been a survey of a large amount of patients where I could pass on what other patients' experiences were with some of these therapies. And so I find that a lot of IC patients are interested in complementary and alternative therapies, and I think the survey also demonstrated that. And I, I don't know if it has to do with the chronicity of IC or you know, now that we're doing a better job with diagnosis and uh, identifying patients earlier with IC, you know, we have women in their 20s and 30s and they're looking at this as possibly a lifeline, a lifetime problem. So they're concerned about what am I going to do in the long term? Am I going to have to be on medications for the long term? And so they're looking for other modalities to feel better uh, and to manage their symptoms. And so uh, with this, of course, it supports things that we already know. Diet is helpful. Physical therapy is helpful. But it also gets into more nitty-gritty about uh, supplements and herbals and mind-body therapies and I think the other thing that's important and I feel like particularly in the last couple of years it's just been some of these things that patients can do are not only affordable but sometimes free so instead of looking at um, you know as a patient you're going to have to put out a lot of costs because as we know patients have to pay for physical therapy have to pay for things like acupuncture that some of these things such as uh, just relaxation, stress management, sleep hygiene, all of these things can be helpful. Um, hot and cold applications. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the patient has to make a big investment, even as far as money or time is concerned. So. Well, Amy, I think we learned something very interesting by working with you and your statistician, Andy Bhattacharya. And once we got the statistical analysis done, I think we learned something about who can most benefit from these therapies? Could you tell us a little about that? Sure. So the survey information that we received on this pretty much mirrors, I would say, the majority of studies for any therapy for IC, which is that the earlier patients try these therapies, the more likely that they're going to find them successful or helpful. So we had plenty of therapies that separated out as um, significantly working much better when patients try them at either under a year since diagnosis or that have been diagnosed within the past one to five years. Um, unfortunately, sometimes for some of the therapies as we got out to five to ten years, ten years out, uh, some of the therapies were not as effective. The flip side of that, what we found is that not all IC patients are trying these therapies earlier. So what we found is that as patients go on, further out from diagnosis, that's when they're trying more complementary and alternative therapies. So I think the other message from this poster is to try things early, uh, to try things often, and that patients are going to have a higher likelihood of success if they do so. Well, thank you so much, Amy, sure. and we look forward to working with you in the future on more studies on complementary and alternative medicine and things that can help IC patients. Thanks, Penny.